Hi, today we're going to take a look at a whole bunch of different jelly bean components as they're called or industry standard components that you're pretty much expected to know right off the top of your head because you'll use these parts over and over and over again in your career and in the teardown videos uh, you've seen me do you'll no doubt have seen these count these parts countless times and when I'm doing a teardown I don't even have to say anything more than the part number because you should instantly know what these chips are they're called jelly bean components so it's very important for any design engineer to have intimate knowledge of these a whole bunch of these jelly bean components so that you can just go oh yeah I need this chip for this particular task here oh yeah just throw in the jelly bean part because right off the top of your head you know the specs you know it's going to do the job it's going to be good enough and that's why these parts are everywhere and as you'll see in well, our first one here it's been around for like 45 years and this is where most of these jelly bean parts have now my definition for a jelly bean part is a it's been around for a long time b it's available for many different manufacturers uh, c it's uh, like cheap it's dirt cheap and uh, four it's available because available from many different manufacturers it's so ubiquitous it's, it's just like typically there's millions of these things in stock even during uh, like times we have like this with uh, the component shortages and things like that you can almost certainly still get these jelly bean components from someone because if you're the manufacturer you've specified into your bill of materials doesn't have it for some reason well you can pretty much throw in any uh, equivalent uh, part with the same part number and you know it's going to do the job because it's a jelly bean component the first one we're going to take a look at here is the LM358. It's a dual bipolar op amp. So if you need just a basic run of the mill op amp to just do basic stuff, then the LM358 is a great choice. It's a dual op amp and they specifically call it an industry standard op amp because it pretty much is. So it's two op amp independent op amps in uh, the one package. There's pretty much no reason to use a single uh, like op amp jelly bean component. If you're gonna like put and choose an op jelly bean op amp, you might as well choose the LM358 because it's a dual one. Even if you don't use the second op amp, hey, it adds flexibility to the design later. You've got that second op amp in, you might be able to bodge it in uh, to your circuit or something like that. At least you have it available, it's designed in. So yeah, dual op amp, handy. And as you can see, it's available for many different manufacturers here. Like I've only got three of them, but there's dozens and dozens, including like no name ones uh, from China or whatever. So as you can see, the date up here, look, June 1976. This is 45 years old and it's still sold in the millions or billions. I don't know how many of these are sold every year, but it is the go to op amp the LM358 also known as the LM2904 and 2904 is just like a higher temperature uh, grade version sort of like a more uh, commercial industrial temperature range than the LM358 and it's available in different versions the B version and the A version and stuff like that and there are some slight spec differences uh, between them but if you're designing in a jelly bean component into your circuit then you generally aren't pushing the specs you don't really care whether or not you get the A version or the B version anything like that if you're worried about that sort of thing then you're not really in the jelly bean category uh, so to speak so yeah I'm, I'm just going to run with that description anyway sometimes you might want to do that but as a general rule no if you're after tighter specs you'll go for a, a more non jelly bean component some features of the LM358 it works anywhere from 3 to 36 volts brilliant so huge wide ranging operation that includes both uh, unipolar and bipolar uh, supply so single supply or a uh, split supply it's relatively low power 300 microamps uh, per amplifier that's not too shabby it's got a unity gain bandwidth of 1.2 megahertz once again that's not too shabby a meg and it is unity gain stable so it's stable it's not going to oscillate with a gain of one and uh, also so another important thing the common mode input range includes ground so that enables direct as it says here direct sensing near ground and if you go over to say the Rome data sheet it actually says calls it a ground sense operational amplifier and that's a huge advantage in terms of like if you want to do like a low side current shunt measurement or something like like a non-critical current shunt measurement just you know to a modicum accuracy then it's a pretty good decent job for that uh, it's got a low input offset voltage low uh, three millivolts but once again this is a jelly bean component jelly bean specs but this is just a guaranteed figure the uh, the typical figure is like 300 microvolts it's an order of magnitude better than that 
But just be aware that that offset voltage and the EMI uh, filters here, if you go down here, you can see that that is uh, specific to the B version here, three millivolts like that. If you go for the regular A version, which is what's available from other manufacturers in there, I'm not sure if TI are the only ones that do a B version, just be aware of that. But the A1, you know, once again, it's around one millivolt typical, something like that. So, you know, good enough. But you can, it's nice to know that you can get like a tighter version uh, available from TI in the B version but if you're designing this in you have to be aware that that you may be limiting yourself to one manufacturer so if you design it in once again a typical one millivolt something like that the ST one over here one millivolt so you know but that's good enough for a ton of applications that's why it's a jelly bean part and I won't bore you with all the other specifications and things like that. It just suffice it to say that this is a, you know, just a nice general purpose op amp for non-critical applications. That's why you're going to use it. And as you can see here, it's a uh, bipolar um, amplifier design. None of that uh, CMOS rubbish. We'll look at that in a minute. And so it's not going to give you rail to rail uh, performance. I'll show you one that does in a minute. And the great thing about Jelly Bean components is they're typically available in many different packages. Look at this, eight different packages from TI here. Um, like uh, P-dips, like your regular, you know, <laughs> dip uh, hobby ones, your SOs, your SOT23s, your T-SOPs, your SOICs, your ceramic packages, your LCCC packages, and stuff like that. And you can see those over on the data sheet here. ST1s are available in four different DFN packages. But of course, you have to be careful if you specified in, say, the STD. DFN package here, you might not be able to get that from TI, for example, or from uh, someone like Rome, for example. Oh, no DFN there. So just be careful. But in general, if you're choosing a jelly bean component, you're typically going to use a jelly bean footprint as well. So you can see some differences in here in the spec, like this Rome one is like four and a half millivolts maximum and stuff like that. The input bias current, by the way, 20 nanoamps, uh, pretty good for uh, bipolar stuff. And the other great thing about jelly bean components is the pinouts are going to be identical across all the chips. In fact, this is the industry standard pinout for a dual op amp. So there you have it. The LM358 is my pick for the jelly bean, uh, just a bipolar op amp. It happens to be a dual one. I don't really have have a jelly bean single op amp, you know, 741 or whatever. Nah, just like LM358 comes in the same package anyway. You might as well get a dual jobby. The LM358 still going strong after 45 years, and that's why it's my pick for the jelly bean op amp. Next up is a Jelly Bean FET op amp. And, well, this one's hard to beat as well because it's September 1978 here. And it's a classic TL07 series. The TL071 is the single, 072 is the dual, 074 is the quad. So, really, you know, pretty easy to remember. Once again, available for many different manufacturers. And it's kind of a little bit better and a little bit worse than the LM358. Uh, um, you know, it's got a reasonably high slew rate. The uh, offset voltage is one millivolt here. Uh, offset drift, two microvolts uh, per degree C. It does have higher power consumption though, even though it's a, an actual FET input op amp. And as you can see up here, it's actually uh, designated as a low noise FET input operational amplifier. But in terms of noise, um, it's actually on par. There you go, input voltage noise there. We're talking about, you know, nine uh, microvolts uh, peak to peak. That's a typical, whereas the LM358 is actually only a typical three microvolts uh, peak to peak. It does have a uh, lower noise density though than the uh, 358, which is about 40 nanovolts uh, per root hertz. And uh, the um, 071 is about 18 nanovolts uh, per root hertz at one kilohertz there. So, you know, a lower noise density, but in terms of input uh, noise and stuff like that. But it does have a low total harmonic distortion, 0.03%. This is why it's very common. You'll find these in lots sort of um, audio designs and things like that. And it does have a bigger voltage range as well. It'll go from 4.5 to 40 volts. So plus minus 20 volts supply, pretty impressive. So you might be wondering why it's actually got a higher power consumption than the uh, LM358, even though it's a, a a FET thing, is because, well, it's a FET on the input here, but as you can see, it's basically a bipolar design. It just has a FET input uh, front end like this. This is why it's still relatively high uh, power consumption. 
But of course, a big advantage that FET input op amps give you is you're talking pico amps now. You're talking typical plus minus one, uh, maximum plus minus 120, so it varies uh, a fair bit. But this is like three orders of magnitude. It's a thousand times less than the uh, nano amps or tens of nano amps you'll get in a bipolar input uh, design. So this is why you want to go for the, and then the input offset current as well, like you're down in like, like femto amps, right? 500 femto amps, pretty low stuff. So that's the advantage of uh, the FET design compared to the bipolar design. But apart from that, like, no, nah, I prefer the 358. I don't like the 072s are nice FET input ones, but they're not my preferred jelly bean op amp just for general applications because the um, LM358 and the next one we'll uh, see as well is also the four channel version of the 358 is uh, lower power consumption and it can do ground sensing as well the input uh, common mode range includes ground as I said great for current sensing single supply applications something like that whereas the uh, TL07 um, series is not really designed uh, for that it won't sense to ground its output will go to the positive rail but it's not a true rail to rail output device and well yeah you'd want to have specific reasons for going to the TL074 but this is it's been around once again for like 40 plus years it is a lot of people's go to op amp especially if you need fed input so what if you like the uh, LM358, but you kind of want that FET input uh, niceness as well, as well as uh, the ground sensing and uh, single supply applications. Well, I've got the chip for you. The good thing about this one is that you don't have to remember the part number. It's the same. It's the 358 again, but it's the LMV. V stands for voltage because it's a lower voltage uh, version of the part, but it is a uh, CMOS version. It's not uh, bipolar, and it's rail-to-rail -rail, um, output operational amplifier as well, Was the LM358 is not there. But apart from that, very um, similar specs, you know, offset, uh, typical offset uh, voltage. It's got rail-to-rail -rail output, as I said, one megahertz gain bandwidth product which is good enough for a lot of applications relatively low noise but the uh, kicker is that because it's a CMOS version the input bias current is only 10 picoamps so uh, three orders of magnitude lower we're looking at nano amp, tens of nano amps before now we're looking at tens of picoamps so if you're you know like a very high input impedance uh, stuff things like that that's where you want to go uh, it's got lower uh, current as well 70 microamps uh, per channel pretty good once again unity gain stable um, um, and some versions have the RFI and EMI uh, filter as well. But good thing is it goes down lower voltage even and it goes down to 2.5 volts guaranteed. It actually operates a little bit below that, um, which is good for like single uh, lithium cell applications, something like that. You might want to uh, use this. I use one. Um, and in fact, I use the LMV321 in my uh, micro current. And I've done a video on that where you, know, you can have a trap with using different brands of this sort of thing. Yeah, so I've actually done a video on that where I used a jelly bean part, but yeah, there were differences between manufacturers. So I recommend going and have a look at that one because that's a real fascinating trap for young players in like using jelly bean parts like this. I thought they were all the same, but it turns out there was a slight difference in capacitive loading and with stability with capacitive loading where you can come a gutsa. Hmm. Once again, it's available in a bunch of uh, packages as well. Uh, absolutely terrific and lots of applications, like countless applications for this. But uh, one of the downsides is its uh, maximum voltage is only 5.5 volts. So, you know, great for like any sort of like battery powered sort of like low power uh, supply, something like that. You might want to look at the LMV version instead of just the regular LM version. But apart from that, it's pretty much an identical um, op amp. And the good thing is it is available in a single version. You can get like a little SOT23 jobby and stuff like that, or the regular um, 358. So the single one is 321 three, or the 358 for the dual as we're used to. So as you can see, it's a just a CMOS FET version of the LM358 and you get some advantages with that. Um, like you can go, once again, you can go rail to rail output voltage. There's basically no drop in these output uh, driver transistors here like you'll get with uh, bipolar op amps. So really good for battery powered supplies and where you have to go right to the rail. Winner. 
Now, of course, just like any op amp, you can actually use this with a split supply, but you are limited to that 5.5 volts maximum. So you can go plus minus 2.5 volts or a little bit above that, uh, no problems whatsoever, but you can't go plus minus five volts, for example. It's not gonna do it. You'll have to go back to the LN358 for that or choose another option. And once again, available in a whole bunch of different packages like this and uh, single and dual. So, and, and we'll have a look at a sec, a quad version as well. So yeah, the LMV358, that's my recommendation for a CMOS Jelly Bean dual op amp or single. So I hear you asking, Dave, I really do need a Jelly Bean quad op amp. Okay, it's the LM324, absolute classic. In fact, it's probably more well known than the 358. The 324 is basically, think of it as a quad version of the LM358. And if you go to some manufacturers here, they will actually tell you, where is it? Look, Rome, uh, ground sense operator, look, LM358, LM324. It's on the same data sheet because they're essentially the same part. It's just basically a uh, quad version, really nice. Same specs, three volts to 32 volts. Uh, and once again, that can work dual supply plus minus uh, one and a half volts up. It's got 800 microamps typical there. Common mode includes range as well, so you can get your ground sensing and stuff like that. The offset voltage is pretty much the same as before. Input offset current, once again, you're in the uh, nano amps or tens of nano amps range. You're not down in peak amps because this is a bipolar op amp just like the LM358. Uh, but apart from that, it's pretty much identical. Go and check the specs for yourself. And you should know all these specs. You should learn them off by heart. And it's, you know, there's little subtle differences here and there, but basically quad version of the LM358. That's why the LM324 gets my vote for the Jelly Bean quad op amp. And as we saw before, the LMV358 also includes the LMV324. Four. you can get a quad version in the CMOS exactly the same. See how easy this is? If you know the 358 and the 324, then you know they just add the V for the CMOS version. And wow, these, like four of these cover a whole ton of different applications. It's, it's unbelievable. This is why they're still used 45 years later. And the LM324 is basically the industry standard uh, quad op amp. Uh, pin out here with the annoyingly the rails in this position positive on this side over here and negative over here always hated it but uh, that's the industry standard it probably started with the LM324 and just for completeness yes you can actually get a single version of the LM324 and the LM3258 uh, it's called the LM321 here hasn't been around quite as long I mean this uh, data sheet here February 2001 I don't know if it was available before that actually but um, that once again it's exactly the same as the LM358 324 in a single package but as I said I virtually don't design in a single op amp like I have designed in the LMV321 uh, in like a tiny little uh, you know, SOT23 or something like that, you're looking at saving space and pin count. Yeah, you might do that, but I typically wouldn't, if I'm going for like an SL8 or something like that, or a DIP8 um, old school, then I'm pretty much gonna put in the dual op amp instead of the uh, LM321. But this is not really a recommendation because to me, the LM321 is not really a jelly bean op amp because if you just go over to DigiKey here, okay, it's available from TI and on semi, but look, zero stock. Zero stock <laughs> on on all of DigiKey. Go to uh, Mouser here. Okay, they've got 140,000 on order. Great, but on order, on order, on order. That's it. You can't get stock of this thing. Uh, so it doesn't meet the requirement for the Jelly Bean. And it's more expensive than the 358. So what's the point? Look, the cheapest price on DigiKey, 22 cents here. Okay, if you go to AliExpress or something, you might be able to, you know, you're going to be able to get it cheaper. But the 358 in stock. Look, 1.8 million in stock at 12 cents each. It's it's a complete no-brainer. This is why I would never really design in just the LM, just the generic LM321 over the LM358. You get that extra op amp for less price, more available, complete no-brainer. So I it's just I'm just including that for completeness. It's not really a jelly bean part. All right, I'm not going to hear the end of it unless I mention the LM741. For all the 741 fanboys out there, man, it is one of your traditional jelly bean op amps but for me it just I, I there's very little reason to use the 741 these days just 
go for the LM358 or the 321 even or you know 324 and the other thing is well yeah you can sort of get some available in like old school packages and look at this old school dip at 91 cents each it's like yeah nah there's a better option than this and it's uh the uh basically the dual version of the 741 and it's the um rc4558 also known as the mc4004558 and we can take a squiz at that and here you go this goes right back to march 1976 here it's and it's the dual basically it tells you it's a dual version of the um 741 so really uh, there's no reason to use the 741 these days i would just go for the dual version and as you can see like availability is better and also if we sort by price here yeah check it out 183,000 available um for like 10 cents why you use the 741 i've got no idea so yeah sorry to all you 741 fanboys but no you'd use the 4558 is just going to be is just a better option all around but once again like this it's similar sort of uh specs you know it's fairly robust little beastie you know short circuit protection all this sort of stuff but it it's not it doesn't include ground sensing it's not rail to rail it's just uh, yeah nah so it's nothing special but it does have relatively low noise um and which is why you'll often find the 4558 in uh lots of audio uh, circuits you know preamps and uh things like that it, it's quite a common part out probably you know the common jelly bean audio op amp i guess but you don't get any niceties like ground sensing or uh, rail to rail or anything like that so it's just like your old school bipolar op amp Having said that, I will not survive the comment section unless I mention the NE5532. Uh, you could say this is the de facto standard audio op amp. I guess I won't go into the reasons why, but you know, low noise, grunty little thing. It's got decent THD performance and everything else. So you'll find this in a ton of uh, audio designs. And once again, it's like 1979. It goes way, way back. And there's a whole bunch of audio files out there who will not touch an audio design unless it has double 532 uh, <laughs> chips in it. And you'll actually see these uh, often advertised in the uh, product design that it uses this chip. But it's not the best performance chip out there. But I guess it's the jelly bean of you know decent performance audio op amps so yeah you will see this one out there a lot so it's well worth uh familiar familiarizing yourself with it making yourself familiar with it so although the definition of jelly bean components kind of implies meh specs i kind of feel obligated to include the jelly bean precision op amp which is the op 07 and this one is going back of course 1983 fantastic so as the precision name implies here it basically means it's got low offset voltage it's it's precise doesn't need any like external trimming or anything like that so you know kind of have like the old school uh talking points like uh comparing it to like chopper amplifiers and stuff like that because back in the day to get low offset voltage you had to use a chopper amplifier but when uh you know the op amp op 07 came along it was sort of no nah, you didn't have to do that it was kind of like it was just low offset voltage built in and uh it's got you know a decent uh voltage range as well plus minus 18 volts here could work down to plus minus three and once again this is available in different grades from different manufacturers and stuff like that but if we look at like the oppo 7 uh c here input offset voltage typically like in the order of you know sub 100 microvolts here like 60 odd microvolts something like that so if you want to step up uh from like the ln358 or a 324 or something like that because of the offset voltage then this is the one that you would design in would be the oppo 7 and because it is a bipolar jobby it's actually uh nano amps input current it's not uh pico amps so yeah sorry for all you pico amp fanboys but unfortunately one of the major downsides is that it's not a uh ground sensing or rail to rail op amp so think of it as like a precision lm uh, 741 or double uh 4558 uh, for example you can also get uh dual versions of this and uh quad as well available in different part numbers you can go uh look at those over your own accord and one of the thing is is because it's like a 741 it does actually have uh offset pins so you can have offset capability so uh, 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 you can get a uh, trimmer in there and trim it to even better specs but if you're after a precision op amp these days if you're designing in like you know fairly tight specs then you, you know there's lots of other alternatives the oppo 7 but it is a generic part available for lots of different manufacturers at a reasonable cost so it's certain and it's been around for like 30 40 years so it certainly gets um the uh, jelly bean 
tick of approval. So there you have it. That's my list of kind of like the top five, I guess, um, jelly bean op amps. You know, the LM324, LM358, the uh, TL070 series, um, the LMV uh, series, you know, and the old school 40058 for kind of like audio or general purpose bipolar stuff, and um, the Oppo 7 for the precision as a bonus there. So kind of like top five jelly bean uh, op amps. So uh, as always, leave it in the comments down below if you think I've missed something, because I'm sure everyone will have their favorite. What is your favorite? What is your most used? What is your go-to jelly bean component? Please leave it in the comments. I want to know. And uh, beginners out there, these chips, you're kind of like expected to know these, not like every in-depth specification. Like you don't have to memorize absolutely everything in here, but you should know the basic order of magnitude of the offset voltages of these and like features like do they have ground uh, current sensing output uh, rail to rail capability and stuff like that. And you should be able to just recognize and use these parts right off the bat. You should have them in stock, you should have them in your uh, CAD library so you can just drop them into your designs and you should just be able to, at a job interview or something, somebody asks you, oh, you know, give us a name us an op amp, right? You'll be able to tell them, oh yeah, I use the LM358 because it's a dual jobby and it's nice, it has ground sensing and it's just, you know, across different manufacturers, it's cheap, really available, it's been available for like 40 years, it's, you know, Bobby Dazzler. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and certainly let me know in the comments down below and by the thumbs up, if I get a lot of thumbs up and views on this, I'll do more because um, like I haven't even touched on, uh, you know, comparators and all sorts of other analog uh, devices, let alone digital ones. I'll do a like a little mini series of jelly bean components that you can know. So anyway, I hope you found that useful. And as always, you can discuss uh, either in the comments down below or over on the EEV blog forum where I have a thread for each and every one of these videos. In fact, I did want this video to like cover more things, but I started yapping on about op amps, so it's just dedicated to op amps. But anyway, and also check out my Odyssey channel. I've got more than 60,000 subscribers over on Odyssey as well if you're sick of the YouTube ads. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Catch you next time. <laughs>